911, what's your emergency? Uh, I, I gotta cut it off. This is 911, what is your emergency? Hey, hey so, like, um, it's not Dawson Murray an emergency, but I just need someone to help me. You can call 311 for local no, services. It's, it's medical. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't have the right tool. Can you provide a better explanation of the situation? Okay, I need to remove my hands. Could you repeat that, yeah, please? I, I got my, my face off, but it's getting hard to see. Uh, I need someone to help me stop the bleeding. Where exactly are you located, and, sir? And, like, how am I supposed to remove my hands with my hands? It's, it's kind of a, a catch-22. I'm going to need an address from you That's to send somebody out. I'm still here, and they won't take me with them unless I give them my hands and face. But the blood's getting in my eyes, and I can't see. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. Greetings, audiophiles. Greetings and salutations. <clears throat> Hello, fellow audiophiles and audio fans, and welcome to the very first inaugural episode of The Vinyl Solution. Oh, freaking. Oh, all right, uh, I'll edit this later. Just keep going. Greetings, audio files and audio fans, and welcome to this very first episode of The Vinyl Solution, the podcast in which I, your host, Hal Akers, will help you achieve the perfect audio setup for pure music listening excellence. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, if you don't know what I mean, then, like, just go listen to something else, because this podcast is only for people who truly enjoy having the right listening experience with the right media on the right equipment. Yeah. This is the podcast for music aficionados who get it. Now, right now, for the very first episode only, you're getting this first taste free. After this episode, everything's going to be like, I'm, I'm going to pay wallet. Unless you're interested in sponsoring the podcast. Like, if you're listening right now and you want to sponsor me, just, like, call me or something. It'll be in the show notes. Want to hear me do an ad read? I can totally do an ad read. We'll get to that. Let me tell you a little bit more about me, your host, Henry A Hal Hal Akers, your host Hal Akers. I'll do it again. Let me tell you a little bit more about me, your host, Hal Akers, so you'll know why you want me as your guide through the wild and wonderful world of audio gear. Trust me, you'll thank me for this. Sorry, I just had to wet my whistle there. Right now, I'm drinking an excellent Lapsang Sushong tea, aged over a pine bough fire. It's very dark and smoky. It tastes like victory. I've got a lot to be excited about right now, audiophiles and audio fans, because as of today, this is it. My four-hour work week life starts tonight. I gotta tell you, there is nothing like the high of change. I've been working for the same company for 20 years. Retail sales. When am I going to release this? Okay, so by the time you hear this, I'm pretty sure that it'll have hit the news wire that K. Sullivan Audio, your home audio purveyor, is no more. It's not official yet, but you can totally see the writing on the wind. Or whatever. I should probably edit this out. <clears throat> okay. To make a long story short, Mr. Sullivan, who hired me when I was 15 years old, my first summer job, is retiring at the ripe old age of 74. He's moving to Florida and leaving the company in the lily-white, silky-smooth hands of his daughter, Kathy Sullivan. And it's like she's one of those people who finished college with a business degree and perfectly straight, shiny hair. Shiny black hair, like a doll's hair. And she's like, she doesn't know the first thing about home stereo equipment. At least, not that I know of. It's not like she worked on the sales floor. She wasn't there Black Friday, Christmas Eve, every single November for nearly 20 years. I mean, I saw her when the new point of sale system was installed, and that was a pretty awkward weekend. But it's not like she had anything to do with customers. Not that I saw. I mean, well, anyway, it's not important. I can edit this part out. <clears throat> 
the point is, it's not like she's not going to make K Sullivan Audio specialize in home stereo systems for the discerning audiophile, the high end collector. I mean, I tried talking to her about it. I've been trying. The good news is, Mr. Sullivan, he's been really good to me. He believed me when he let me bring in some higher end stereo components that are like a little on the rare side. On the pricey side, audio equipment for the practicing corporate attorney or dermatologist to the stars. Yeah, I know. Nobody can afford this kind of thing. But those who can, will. Those kind of people, they entertain. They have people over and stuff. And when they do, they want to, well, they want their music to influence. They want sound that fills people up and makes them transcend reality. That's the kind of stereo components that I wanted to bring into the store. And we did. Mr. Sullivan finally said, okay, so we did. And I demo them for people, but you know, people said it was too much. I demo something and, oh my God, if I could just have sold three or four of the Red Hook audio systems, I could have gotten my own. I mean, I, I really only needed to hustle a couple Christmas seasons, a Father's Day or two to get enough commission and enough of a discount to get my own. And I mean, I demo the system in the store, but people said it was just too much. Of course, they must have met the price. I mean, they were probably just being cheap. They probably wanted me to come down a few bucks. It's a power trip, really. They think they're a big shot who can get a deal, but you can't. Not on this kind of equipment. But I'd put the needle on the record, turn up the volume a bit, and, and people would listen. And then say that they couldn't explain why, but it was just too much. Mm. And what the hell is that supposed to mean? Too much. Is it like, oh, the sound is just too crystal clear for me? Is it like the highs are too high, the lows are too low? It's too much like being in front of a, a real live band. What's too much? I can feel the bass thumping in my viscera. It's too much. Get over yourselves. If you don't want to feel music, then go to one of those big box stores if you want a cheap, safe stereo, because obviously you don't really like music. If you really liked music, you'd know what this is about. They're probably used to listening to music on $12 earbuds anyway. And that's exactly what Miss Kathy Sullivan's going to do. She doesn't love audio. She doesn't love sound. She doesn't even love music. Not that I know of. I tried playing the system in the store for her. How can you work in home audio and not love Steely Dan? She was all like, shut that thing down. Yeah, maybe I was testing her. Maybe I wanted to see, like, where her priorities were. I really thought if she heard the new Red Hook audio system, it'd reel her in. And she says, shut that thing down before she scurries back into her accounting office cloister. Next day, she comes out on the sales floor and announces, we have to get rid of the Red. No more employee discounts until the end of the fourth fiscal quarter. All floor models are now 50% off. She's selling this like it's day-old bread. Nobody who can afford it is going to want anything that's had a yellow and red sticker on it. Now it's tainted. It's not pure anymore. It's out of the box. And the kind of people who don't care about a 50% off floor model discount still can't afford it. I can't sell that. I can't buy it. And they suspended our employee discount. She's like, there won't be any layoffs. But you know what? That's what they say when they want to drive you out. It's like I can 100% see it coming. She's going to liquidate and sell it all out to some big box store chain, take the money and run. So at the end of my shift, I just walked out. <sighs> so, yeah, freedom. Just another word for nothing left to lose. The point is... <clears throat> The point is, I'm available to provide my considerable knowledge and expertise in the marketing of high-end luxury audio equipment to any, like, you know, hire me because I'm awesome, okay? Today, I have here before me the stereo system of which dreams are made. 
Okay, so like, okay, I I am so jacked up right now. You know how like you want something like for freaking ever and you finally get it? And you just don't even you just don't even when businesses like this liquidate, there's no respect happening. They sell off everything at cost, less than cost. This luxury stereo equipment goes to somebody who like doesn't know how to treat this kind of music equipment. And even if they did, what are they going to listen to? Taylor Swift? Coldplay, for fuck's sake? No. So, yeah, whatever. Now. <clears throat> now. Now you're going to get to really, truly hear it. As an example, audiophiles and audio fans, I've got the craziest, rarest piece of music in pop culture history. You can fight me on that one. <phone rings> Freaking robocall. <phone rings> I do not have time for this. <phone rings> Sarah, turn on Do Not Disturb. <clears throat> The automatics, the red hook. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen and friends beyond the binary, I bring you the automatics and their one EP, which I found still in the plastic at a yard sale in somewhere in Delaware. And I've been saving for the right sound system. I know you're probably thinking this is some band he just made up. No, 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 no. The Automatics were a one-hit wonder group out of Providence, Rhode Island. Totally misunderstood. Buried by the satanic panic. But a blast of fresh air in the mid-1970s. These guys were using sampling way ahead of everyone else. They were a big influence on that whole sort of punk pre-new wave reaction to prog rock thing that was going on. Super young. Everyone in this band met at Rhode Island School of Design. They played, like, <clears throat> like basement parties and stuff. People couldn't figure out if they were geniuses or if they were kidding. Anyway, by some miracle, they got signed to Private Stock Records, which is pretty friggin' awesome when you consider that this was the same record label as Blondie. But if you also consider this was the same record label that David Soule from Starsky and Hutch made Don't Give Up On Us, Baby, you can see how things were likely to go... Uh, Tango United. So the label's like putting them under all this pressure to make a danceable pop song, something they can remix for the disco market, but still like cool enough that they can get some critical, you know, whatever. Well, the night before they were set to record, the Automatics actually got a slot playing at CBGB's. <laughs> no pressure, right? Needless to say, the band has a lot of tension during load-in. The front man, who called himself Mr. Noise, was being a diva, probably channeling stage fright into bad behavior. 
bossing around the rest of the band and sabotaging them while trying to suck up to the flesh tones. And finally, he got into some kind of altercation near the urinals with Peter Zaremba. They got kicked out before they even had a chance to play. The next day, they had to record this pop hit. Noise was already pissed off that they had to compromise their artistic integrity by writing something mass market. So when the rest of the band managed to cobble together a song that resembled a pop hit, he had to cram the lyrics with his usual brand of non-rhyming, anti-establishment, animal rights stuff. I'll get to the point. This tea is awesome. It tastes like ancient vengeance, I swear to God. Oh, because that was another thing. Private Stock Records. One of the hits in their catalog was I'm Swearing to God, that gem of the solo career of Frankie Valli, and this Mr. Noise kid could not let go of it. That was like the bar under his saddle. He crafts this like antithesis of music that people like, that yet somehow still likable, and calls it the goat. Because when you think of pop song titles, the first thing that springs into mind is farm animals, right? And then... The day they're set to record, noise is a no-show. Because apparently, after they got kicked out of CBGB's, this noise kid decided the responsible thing to do was to zip out to the woods. Apparently, he said he had to reclaim his power, whatever that means, light a campfire, and run around naked or something. The rest of the band is like, he's useless, we just gotta record anyway. And the bass player, Cindy Holzer, said, I'm singing the lead on this one. Cindy was in a relationship with the guitarist, Jared Crespi. But there had definitely been something going on between her and this noise guy, too. She was extra pissed at noise, and she put it into the vocals. When noise finally surfaced, it was ugly. He had the mother of all hangovers, and he was not enlightened enough of a man to be okay with his vocals taken over by a woman, and a bass player at that. It would have been better for all of them if the whole thing had just fallen on its face right into the dustbin of history. But then, the worst thing happened. They had a hit. This is where I would put in an ad read if I had sponsors. And if you're listening to this right now, if you're some big executive at a sound equipment company, right here is where I would put that ad read just for you. Cha-ching! Which is dumb because cash registers don't go cha-ching anymore. They're just sort of... Now it's a point of sale, a POS... I wonder if Kathy Sullivan's even noticed. They had a retirement party for Mr. Sullivan. I was supposed to go. But I couldn't because I was busy. I had to walk my neighbor's dog. And if you check my neighbor's alarm system, you'll see that between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m., I was in and out of their apartment walking the dog. I have an electronic trail. Okay, anyway, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'll get there. <clears throat> they had a hit, much to their chagrin. The record company got somebody to take the shamanistic shambles and remix it into a sensible package for Top 40 Radio. There was a disco club mix and everything, and DJs kept playing it. I'm going to play a little bit of it for you, the radio version. You'll probably recognize it. This is just, like, this isn't, this is a download. It's not the good stuff. Don't worry. We'll get to the good stuff. Patience, audiophiles and audio fans. <laughs> can hear it's like catchy but then there's that thing where the rhythm sort of puts you on the wrong foot throws you off scraping sound 
gets into your system? Is it anti-capitalist? Is it a, a back to nature thing or what? Band's friggin' awesome. So that's the radio edit. The Village Voice, somebody actually wrote about it, was this like some anti capitalist, tenants reform, anti racist stuff? Don't forget, this was right around the same time that a certain real estate developer in Queens and his son were making it real hard for black people to rent good apartments. So, like, the song's generating some buzz. And the automatics were like, how long do we have to put up with each other? Cindy Holzer and Jared Crespi had made up by this point, mostly because they had a common enemy, because Mr. Noise's ego is through the freaking roof. And then David Berkowitz starts getting messages from the neighbor's black lab. Remember him? Google Summer of Sam if you don't know what I mean. I'll put a thing in the show notes. And all of a sudden, nobody wants to hear a song called The Goat. If you can't handle that, you can't handle The Mountain Goats, the best ever death metal band in Denton. And if you can't handle that, you can't handle music. And this was just the radio edit. This wasn't the real version, the one that went on the EP, which nobody bought. I mean, somebody must have bought it or something, because I've got it here, still in the original plastic. You know what? You know what? That's not what this is about. This is about... All right, hang on a second. There's somebody outside. Here we friggin' go. You know what? Like, here's the thing. If we're going to have to live in a fascist state... At least the train should run on time. If you're going to, like, if you're a responsible police officer, you don't come over just to, like, ask a few questions at 11 o'clock at night, even if the light's on. I mean, come on. Jesus. I'm going to edit this out. But for posterity, I showed the cops on my phone app. I turned my neighbor's alarm off at 8 o'clock, walked the dog, turned it back on at 845. I was nowhere near the store tonight. I have... This is ridiculous. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know what? Let's just get to the good stuff. This is the part. Okay, if you're listening and you work for like Sony or whatever, this is my ad read voice. You ready? Check it out. All right, let me just queue up. <clears throat> you know, audio files and audio fans, talent wins games, but teamwork wins championships and works in football as well as in the wonderful world of hi-fi and this particular suite of stereo components curated by red hook audio is nothing short of a championship first choose the right speaker like the tindalos diamond series floor to ceiling speakers featuring a 15 inch woofer and satellite array going up covering low mid and high range as well as a horn for the tweeter. You'll find with just a pair of these well-designed speakers, you won't need a subwoofer, but one can be added if you really want to release the hounds. No speaker stands needed. Jeez, that's really beautiful. They like point out into the room. I don't know why people thought this was creepy. Okay. <clears throat> for the heart of your system, the new Red Hook Power Amplifier utilizes the latest in solid state and vacuum tube technology. The ultimate solution for bi amping loudspeakers. 300 watt vacuum tube amplifier and 600 watt solid state amplifier on one chassis. Vacuum tube section powers the mid and upper drivers. Solid state section drives power hungry woofers with the HPL power output meter. Yeah, this is pretty hot. For a preamp, try the Red Hook HPL 1100 two-channel vacuum preamp. The elegant yet simple design has separate audio and control sections and 12 analog inputs, including moving coil and moving magnet phono. Your turntable should be of the highest quality, so look no further than the Dunwich LXXLXXXDC manual turntable available in brass or onyx. Oh my god, onyx, I swear to you. Anyway, anyway, onyx. Featuring not one, but two carbon fiber tone arms. Yeah, 
Of course you have to have the HPL Fine Audio Gold Moving Coil Cartridge. For only $16,000. It's 14 karat gold, people. Listen, specs don't do it justice. I'm going to play this for you. Time to get this baby out of the plastic. Okay, I'm going to need something sharp. Well, sharper than that, obviously. i got a box cutter. This plastic isn't like the stuff they use in stores. Somebody rewrapped this. Like they wanted the album to stay sealed. Like those mummies, am I right? Uh, oh, yeah. Come to Papa. Cheap bastards at private stock couldn't even spring for a good sleeve. It's just a plain paper whatever. You know what? It's a damn shame that noise isn't around to hear this. Private stock, the record label, they stopped issuing the EP. Just pulled the emergency brake on the whole thing. Cindy and Jared skipped town. The drummer, Catfish McLean, he's in Scotland or something. The last time anybody saw Mr. Noise, he was stalking around the 17th hole of the Metacomet Golf Club right near the Providence River on Halloween night. Rumor is, he either fell or jumped in and got swept out to sea. His shirt washed up somewhere near Asbury Park. It doesn't necessarily mean he's dead. All right, Mr. Noise, if you're out there and you're listening, here's a long-distance dedication for you from Al Akers of The Vinyl Solution. I gave my entire adult life to that job. You can call it an adult life. Dropped out of college. Help that. Everything's going to be better now. rat's ass if humans are here or not. Nature's better off without us. Who's going to inherit the earth? Who's going to inherit the sound? Kathy, Lily, White, Sullivan, with her silky, smooth skin? I'm going to... I'm not wearing a skin anymore. Mr. Noise, he knew. He knew that there's something bigger out there. I'm going to join him. I'm going to take off this mask and find him. I just need 
something sharper. Something sharper. It's got to come off. It's got to come off. It won't take me with them if I can't get out of my skin. How can they sponsor me if I'm still stuck in this skin? Because if you can get inside the sound, that's what this sound system wants. It wants to merge. You can't let anything get in the way. I, I've got to cut it off. I've got to cut it off, 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 You have been listening to The Audio File, presented by 6630 Productions. Hal Akers was played by Owen McEwen. Kathy Sullivan was played by Tarn Hurley. Cindy Holzer was sung by Jill Knapp. The 911 dispatcher was played by Vincent Friel. The Goat was written by Vincent Friel. Lyrics by Lindsay Harris Friel. All other music was written and performed by Vincent Friel. The audio file was written and produced by Lindsay Harris Friel and Vincent Friel, inspired by the work of H.P. Lovecraft.